start things off, it's been about two weeks in Sonora, and a, a lot has happened since then. But has it fully sunk in yet that they're going to be racing at the car soon? Oh, yeah. It's fully sunk it in. And as you guys know, getting just making the commitment is a huge one itself. But then now it's putting the pieces of the puzzle together in order for us to make it happen. But either which way, I'll drain the bank account to make it happen. So <laughs> we're going. <laughs> so you basically finished top two in class for most of Sonora. But were there any sort of like difficulties you might have faced along the way, like a stage that was particularly hard or something coming up with the car? Um, I think Sonora as a whole, there was a, a lot of changes. Um, a difficult thing was because we were in the national class, meaning we used a different rally system than um, the FIA classes. So we actually had to be about 60 meters closer to our uh, waypoints. Uh, that being said, oh, all the FIA class classes took off before us. So a lot of their lines missed those waypoints. So we had to be on point with our waypoints no matter what, because... We could be on a road to the left of a fence, but our waypoints through a fence on the right. So we had to definitely be on our A game in order to um, hit our marks and be on point. It was very important to do so. But the main thing was keeping the car together and rally racing. It's definitely a longevity thing in uh, the nutrition rate. I believe last year you didn't finish because you were involved in like this massive crash. So how was it to sort of bounce back from that to go from that to winning this year? Yeah, last year we actually had a head-on. A bike had missed a turn, and then they were going backwards in their own dust, and I uh, was trying to make that turn, and we just hit. And it was the scariest moment of my life, to be honest, to think that I hurt someone or potentially worse. Um, but he was all good. He is awesome. He's a trooper, and he actually raced this year, and I got to see him, so that was pretty cool. Um, but, yeah, to come back from that, you know, I, I've had uh, – I've had some unfortunate luck at Sonora over the years. So this year to turn my luck around my first year with Can-Am doing it in the X3 for the first time. Absolutely. was amazing. Um, you know, I can't say enough about the unit and the team that I brought down there. I had uh, all set R and D down there and their, their whole crew. And I just was blown away with the, the camaraderie we had within our team and, this little small but mighty team, um, and it obviously showed in the results. And on the topic of Can Am, this is your this is obviously your first year with them, and you've already done a lot of with them already. How have they helped you with transitioning into a new manufacturer? Can Am has been absolutely amazing. The professionalism, the quality of people, equipment, um, just the way they handle themselves has been such a amazing thing to deal with them um i can't say enough even when i need parts last minute like we got the i got signed by pan am at the beginning of the year at three weeks to prepare for king of the hammers and i had parts in two weeks like that's unheard of that that does not happen with the oem so it, it's been honestly incredible and their support from the side of racing um you know you have simon you have the r d department that works closely with me and us to make sure we have the best equipment um and teach us about it. And so it's just been, uh, it's, it's been incredible. I'm very grateful to be a part of the Canyon family and I'm absolutely loving it. Obviously I, uh, you know, it was maybe my missing link was uh, can Am, and then also my team I created this year because now we've kind of been unstoppable and I'm so proud of it. So you've had a couple busy couple of weeks with Sonora and then Nora and then Dos Maras. How was it racing through 3000 kilometers or so of desert basically every day for two weeks? It was crazy. It was 3,000 miles, too. Not kilometers, which I'm oh, like, God. it's crazy. I'm like, oh, my gosh, we went that far. Um, it's been absolutely amazing. And I leave on Monday again to go back down to Mexico to go do trail emissions with all the factory Can-Am racers. So I'm going to hop back in my race car that I just raced 3,000 miles in. And we're about to go do it all again just for fun this time. So no racing. But um, it's been unbelievable you know one race after another and it was non-stop we had one day of rest in between sonora and nora and it wasn't really rest it was pretty much make it happen to get to nora and uh tech and get everything done and then uh to do dos myers it we, we just we're already there why not add another one to it and we didn't even trailer our car to the starting line we went from cabo in the race car total rally style and drove it to the starting line of, of Dos Mares. So we just kept it going. 
<clears throat> so you had Jeremy Gray as your co driver for Sonora and then his daughter Sadie for the Mexican 1000. How was it getting to work with that family and win alongside them? Oh, that family is absolutely amazing. Jeremy has such a pedigree behind him on knowing what he uh, knows about the Can-Am platform as well as a navigator. So it's been it's been great having him because he's so knowledgeable when it comes to the mechanics, how to drive them to keep the car alive. Um, and he's just such a great human being um, to have him in the right seat. And the way he is just always so enthusiastic and nice and uh motivated it's just been it's been great and then yeah last minute all of a sudden I Jeremy was already going to Nora with also and so I didn't have a navigator and I decided to go last minute as well I was like okay so who's gonna ride with me and he's like let me call my daughter she's only 16 years old and that girl has such a bright future ahead of her she absolutely killed it I'm blown away with her. Um, she reminds me of my best friend and my navigator, uh, mainly, who is Erica Sachs, who owns Waypoint Nav. And I was like, you talk to me just like Erica does. I was like, that's impressive. Like, it's pretty cool. Me and Erica, years and years and years in the seats next to each other. And so to kind of have someone get thrown in there at such a young age and be so confident and on point is huge. And on the top of co-driving, you did some yourself for with Mitch also up at Dulce Mars. How did that compare to driving? <laughs> I can say I'm not, I, I don't like the navigator seat. <laughs> um, Mitchell absolutely killed it in the driving seat. Um, he, he did in the navigator seat too. He's all around great from navigating to me and then also driving. Um, but I was just so worried. It was a night race. So that I'm just trying not to like make sure I don't get sick or if I'm starting to get sick, I need to take some drama mean to make sure we, we, you know, capitalize on it. Um, so yeah, it was a it was a rough navigator uh, seat, but for me, but I, I think we did okay. We did pretty good. So I still had my wits about me. I did a good job, but I don't feel like uh, I, I feel like I could have been a lot better. But I was just so worried about getting sick. <laughs> and if I'm not mistaken, you did those Myers well, sort of any preparation or pace notes or whatever. Did that make the experience like any even more difficult for you? <laughs> Yeah, so we had nothing. Like, we legitimately didn't even have fuel stops. We technically did have fuel stops, but we didn't really have them planned, and so we missed all of them. And so we had to just keep stopping and asking people for fuel. And so we stopped probably 10 times, which I guarantee you we probably would have won if we would have had our program a little more dialed for those mares. But, um, yeah, we uh, we ended up uh, getting second. <laughs> But yeah, we definitely didn't have anything planned when we were on the starting line. Mitchell just looks over at me and he, he's looking through the notes and he goes, Sarah, these are in Spanish. <laughs> we don't we don't speak Spanish. So then we're kind of like, oh my gosh. And so I have a full dictionary. Like I started writing down notes in my notes on my phone and I was going to save it to the back of my screensaver so I could just hit it and it would give me like a key, like Dur means right, <laughs> like IQZ leans left. I was like, oh my gosh, how are we going to do this? We ended up getting notes last second, like as we're lining up to uh, take off and uh, a fellow American team came over and was like, hey, we got notes for you. I was like, thank you so much. <laughs> okay, so um, looking ahead, you're going to be the ninth driver to have raced in both Extreme E and the car. Did you ever have the chance to talk about the car with those who've done it with you when you who done it when you were an extreme? Um, yeah, actually, Nasser uh, has always been a big supporter and advocate for me to get to that car. So that's pretty awesome. Um, the others, they all know how much I've been wanting to go to that car. It's such a big deal for me. And they all say like, hey, they need an American female over there to represent America. And um, they're they're lacking that and they're missing that. And so they see it. It's just the hardest thing is the disconnect from America to the European racing. Um, it's very hard to know the people there because obviously we're not there. Um, there's just a huge disconnect that makes it very difficult to be an American to race that race. But now it's starting to open doors, starting to get a little bit more accessible, um, especially obviously, you know, I switched to Can-Am because I, I knew you had to be in a Can-Am to race to car and to be competitive. And that's been my goal. And they know that from the start. So it's been an amazing uh, journey so far. And yeah, I'm, I'm super stoked to have all the support from the people that um, uh, currently do race to car.
And speaking of racing in other series, you've obviously run in a bunch of different disciplines like motocross, stadium, super trucks, Baja, now rally. Even though they're all different styles of racing, do you feel that this diversity in your resume has helped you get to where you are today? A hundred percent. I think um, I'm, I'm always up to racing something new and challenging myself to learn to get better and better. Um, I've raced all sorts of different disciplines and all sorts of different kinds of vehicles. Um, one thing is for sure is I'm really quick at adapting. And so I can get into a new vehicle and have a pretty good pace. Um, off the bat. And I think I'm very, uh, a very smart driver, um, as well as smooth and aggressive. So those three make for a good recipe, um, as long as I, I keep my aggression under control when it comes to longevity stuff. <laughs> now, looking ahead, what's your plan for preparing for the car? Like, do you have any specific races scheduled for it or testing overseas planned? Um, right now we're still trying to put the puzzle together. So it's securing a team first, which team I will be on. And then after that, it will be, um, training, lots of training with Jimmy Lewis. So Jimmy Lewis is where I'm going to be living at. So just trying to secure a team, secure a navigator, if it's going to be Sean, uh, Bierman, or if it will be jo Jeremy Gray, um, and go from there. What do you see as your goal for the car? Like, is it just for now, is it just to finish or are you aiming for a certain run? Um, I think overall, Dakar is a whole new other monster, right? So going there your first year, you got to stay humble. I think going there and finishing is the goal. That'd be the ultimate goal. Um, hopefully have some good stages in there that can highlight that we belong up front. Um, that would be a cherry on top of the whole thing um but that is definitely the goal is first to finish and then after that just build now it's probably too early to think that far into the future but what else do you see yourself racing after the car like if given the opportunity would you like to race for the world championship or anything of that nature yes yeah, so i want to do the world rally raid championship that is the goal um as well as the car so that's the ultimate goal after that i don't know I honestly, I can only think about maybe going back to Baja in a trophy truck or um, having my own team of some sort. But yeah, that's that's honestly the ultimate to do the World Rally Championship. Okay, so um, <clears throat> before we wrap this up, is there anything else you would like to add? Uh, no, just all my sponsors, thanks to them and everyone supporting and um, our incredible team that we've built and uh, it takes everyone to kind of make this all happen and so I'm just super grateful and and happy that you know we have such a good fan base and such a good group of uh, family and sponsors.